Alan Boomer, let's I'll have you walk us off the ledge here a little bit because I see, you know, jobless <laughs> claims up today. We've got, uh, you know, a full point curve inversions. We've got Golub saying uh, we might not even be in recession until 2025. Curve will be inverted through 2026. I see equities in the red now. W walk us off the ledge here, Alan. Well, I'm on the ledge with you guys. I mean, uh, I am no. concerned for sure. I'm concerned about the Fed being more aggressive. Like we, we came into this year with the view that if the Fed were to raise interest rates, maybe 50 to 75 basis points, all will be well. But it's not looking like that, right? The, the data are still very strong. I know today's number was something we, the market should be cheering, but it, I don't see the Fed backing down. And so I am very concerned. I am also looking at these bond yields and saying, man, there, there is some competition for stocks today with yield being so high, especially on the short end. Guy, so where do you think at this point, you heard uh, Gunlock's comments, maybe the top still isn't in place. And this is from yesterday. So that was after the, the big move that we saw. Um, how much higher do we go? And what does the recent action in the 10 and 30 tell you that we're starting, it looks like, to price in more of a slowdown around the corner? So I'll take your, your second question first. I think the response to Jay Powell's uh, fairly hawkish comments on, uh, on Tuesday was, was very telling, right? So short-term interest rates certainly rose. But the curve inverted, which tells us that uh, from an economic standpoint, the bond markets believe that the faster and further the Federal Reserve hikes overnight interest rates, the worse the downturn is going to be, and the bigger and faster they're going to have to cut them, not necessarily in 2023 or maybe even early 2024, but eventually. Right? So the 10-year and the 30-year Treasury yield care more about that eventually. The two-year Treasury yield cares more about that, that, that speed. Uh, to, uh, to Gunlock's point, we don't know uh, with very much confidence how far the Federal Reserve at this point is going to have to raise or going to choose to raise interest rates to slow economic activity and inflation. So far, inflation has been pretty unresponsive uh, to what's happened so far. Granted, there's a lot of lags in there. Uh, but thus far, the lack of response means that Powell and company really have no choice but to, uh, to move at the very least further, hmm. if not faster. The next data point we have to care about is, of course, tomorrow's monthly payrolls report. Typically, at this portion of the cycle, uh, it's hard to predict when, but there's one monthly payrolls report that is very poor out of the blue. Great example is November 2007. Everyone was reasonably optimistic. Payrolls report came out negative, and Treasury yields across the curve fell by about 80 basis points. Wow! Them. And then the so recession the began the next month. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Alan, quick final. It uh, happens fast. It, absolutely. Same with claims rising. Alan, let me just ask you. You're looking at especially low valuation parts of the market, if I'm not mistaken, where you feel a little bit more comfort. Uh, walk us through your thinking for what could be a very rocky, you know, spring summer period here. Sure. I mean, I look at bonds again as competition with stocks today. We just talked about the 30 year treasury yielding just under 4%. What if you could buy a stock with a 4% dividend yield that trades at four or five times next year's earnings? I mean, that's Phillips 66. There's a lot of stocks in the energy market that are really trading at very, very low valuations that over these next, I'm not going to say 30 years, but over the next few years, I think we'll do a lot better with super low valuation stocks that pay really good dividends. Phillips 66 only pays out about 16% of his profit. Mm -hmm. So a lot of protection for that dividend as well. Wonderful. Well